Hello, my name is Christophe Tibierge and I teach finance in ESCP Europe, especially in the Exec MBA program. We hear a lot about risk and specifically risk in finance in the news. And the first question is why is risk important? Well, some of us know the relationship between risk and return. With a high risk, people expect a high return because they want to get compensated for the risk they have taken. And for a low risk, we can understand that they will only ask for a low return. So the question turns out to be, what is risk and how is it measured so that we can better understand the relationship between risk and return? Now, what is risk in finance? Risk is volatility. If we take the example of a stock market with share prices, there are some shares whose prices go up and down and sometimes reach extremes. Well, the higher the magnitude of the difference between up and downs, the higher the volatility, the higher the risk. But then it's not only a matter of magnitude, it's also a matter of probability. The question is, what is the probability to reach those extremes? Therefore, risk in finance is a question of magnitude, but also of probability. In order to illustrate those ideas of magnitude and probabilities, let's take an example. Let's assume you have an exam in finance with the grades of the exam. And you have all the grades of the exam, ranging, for example, from 0 to 20 points or from fail to A+. Well, usually, those grades follow a statistical pattern that we call the bell-shaped curve. If you look at the graph, you can see on the horizontal axis all the values of the grades, ranging, for example, from 0 to 20. And the vertical axis measures the probability of the event. Therefore, on the graph, the probability the highest is at the center of the graph, meaning that the probability to have the average grade is the highest. But then, as for extreme grades, either very bad grades or excellent grades, then the probability is lower. Now, let's assume that instead of exam grades, this curve shows the statistical distribution of the share prices of a share listed on a stock market. We have the average share price, which is the most probable at the center of the curve. But we also have the extreme prices with a lower probability. Therefore, in the same graph, we have an order of magnitude, but we also have a question of probabilities. The wider the bell-shaped curve, that is, the more distant the extremes, the higher the volatility, therefore the risk of the share. Now, there are two problems in the measurement of the risk. The first problem is trying to identify the correct statistical law. Indeed, for decades, researchers believed that the share prices followed a bell-shaped curve, that is, this Gaussian model we have seen. And we have based many models in financial decision-making on that bell-shaped curve. But recent evidence shows that share prices do not follow exactly that statistical law and that it requires a more complex law to describe more perfectly the behavior of those share prices. Which means that basing our model on this bell-shaped curve could lead to wrong decisions, especially at the extremes, because the probabilities are not well measured. Now the second problem is that no statistical law, even the fittest to the model, can predict precisely 100% of the future events. Therefore, we will always have some points, some share prices outside the curve. And in the recent years, that has been the problem of finance. One point that is not exactly on the low might put down a whole model because of 
the reality of our real world, which is not a statistical law, but made of different observations and hazard. In conclusion, risk is volatility, and we try to measure that volatility by finding the best statistical law that fits to the observations. But there's always a risk that some of the observations will not fit exactly the model. Therefore, there is a risk, an additional risk in that risk. I call that a risk within a risk.